Well, hello there, fellow geeks and geekettes, and welcome to yet another video. Or rather, welcome to yet another episode of Focusing on Artists, in which I focus on artists. Now, for today's episode, I finally decided to talk about one of the best comic book artists there are, and uh, one of my personal favourites, to be honest. Uh, well, and he is no one else but Mike Mignola, who is uh, most well known for the creation, writing and drawing uh, Hellboy series. Now, let me give you a little bit of background to Mike Mignola and Hellboy. So, Mike Mignola is an American artist who um, started to be very productive in the... I think that in the latter half of the 1980s, when he started working a little bit for Marvel, a little bit for DC, um, but he was always interested in, uh, well, horror-themed uh, lit literature and stories, in the occult, in history, in um, mythology and legends in uh, authors such as Edgar Allan Poe and H.P. Lovecraft and uh, all these things you can then see reflected in Hellboy. Um, so in many interviews he himself said that the thing he loved the most always was uh, drawing monsters and there, wa and there was that thing that he wanted to do for living in life. <coughs> well he wanted to start somewhere so he started started working for the big two, Marvel and DC, where, of course, um, he didn't feel as, you know, comfortable as he would feel later then when creating his own Hellboy. Uh, the biggest success in DC was when he drew and wrote a little bit of Batman. Um, him loving the darker um, oriented matters. Batman was definitely uh, more suitable for him than, say, the colourful Boy Scout Superman. Now, uh, then the beginning of the 1990s came and um, at one con once he just for the fun of it created um, a character, he drew a sketch there of a devil demon-like character uh, quite buffed and bulky, and uh, it seemed to him that something was lacking. So, uh, on the belt buckle of that particular character, he wrote Hellboy, and there you go. You've got the character that would be popular for another 20 plus years. Um, so, the first Hellboy issue then came out um, at the beginning of the 1990s, and since then, has become one of the most popular and one of the most iconic characters in comic books. Um, now, Hellboy is, um, well, basically a uh, son of uh, one of the lords of hell, so son of a devil, son of a demon, and a witch um, who was, well, courting that particular demon. And um, he was summoned uh, right at the end of World War Two, by uh, well the Nazis in order to um, well conquer the world, but luckily he was saved <coughs> by uh, well the Allies, and since then raised by Professor Brutenholm and uh, became a part of the BPRD which is the Bureau uh, for Paranormal Research and Defense, and that is an organization fighting demons and monsters and things like that. Um, so he, Hellboy, got uh, an honorary human status, and as a demon um, who files his own horns, um, started basically hunting his own kind, monsters. Uh, but Hellboy is himself uh, a very likable guy. He is, you could say, just another guy, just another fella who enjoys his cigarettes, who enjoys his booze, who enjoys um, witty remarks and conversations. Uh, and, uh, well, while doing these things, he also fight, fights monsters. Um, now, 
I'm not going to go into depth as far as the stories go. There have been many comic books written about Hellboy, basically uh, covering his life since uh, his birth and his summoning to uh, the Earth until, spoilers, his death and uh, his, uh, well, uh, adventures in Hell. Um, now, I'm only going to focus on the art of Mike Mignola, which already, you can see, is very specific and... Um, you don't really see anything like that, except when an artist is trying to imitate Mike Mignola. I would... <coughs> the one word that comes up my mind as far as Mike Mignola's art is minimalistic, if I had to describe it in one word, but it is of course more complicated, more complex than that. Let's say that Mike Mignola, he doesn't need many details. His drawings or his art might seem, as I said, minimalistic, even simplistic at times, um, when he really does not burden himself with details and it is also very specific to him that he hides many things in shadows. So you can see a lot of black colours in his art where um, he draws a page or a character right and uh, he only reveals he only shows to the reader that which he considers to be important but it is quite enough for the reader um, for the fan really to look at the picture and understand what he or she sees right so Mike Mignola does not need to show a lot but what he shows matters and says everything about what Mignola intended to say, right? Now, as far as the color palette, that of course colorists uh, are, a di are a different question, but um, Hellboy being Mignola's own creation, I believe he has to approve the final colors. Um, there are not many colors, right? The color palette is quite um, limited, but that is a, you know, another part of Mignola's artwork and it is very much connected with what I said before that he doesn't need to show much, right? Um, a limited amount of details, simple, strong, very prominent and dominant lines and um, appropriately placed shadows and appropriately chosen colors <clears throat> is everything that Mike Mignola needs and um, you might say that well it's easy right to draw like that so for instance if he draws a character <clears throat> in the distance he just draws basically this simple little almost a stick character right so one might say oh this is easy I could do that well I beg to differ I beg to differ that anybody you know, or that many people would be able to draw this. Here you can see a tremendous re re representation of uh, the Lovecraftian influence on um, Mignola. There is a lot of tentacles, or there are a lot of tentacles and tentacle-like characters in Mignola's uh, work. A lot of monsters resembling Cthulhu. He even <coughs> invented his own like cosmic gods characters, such as, you know, uh, Lovecraft wrote in his uh, The Call of Cthulhu. Here you can see a beautiful, beautiful page with Rasputin there. And there you can see the historical influence. He was very much interested in history and all kinds of history and myths and legends. Rasputin, of course, being a historical character, being um, like some sort of advisor to uh, the... Um, I believe it was the Romanov um, like royal family in uh, Russia. <coughs> so, and, and as far as mythology goes, you can find aspects of mythology and legends from all around the world. From Europe, Germanic mythology, Slavic mythology, Celtic mythology, Roman and Greek mythology. You can find um, uh, Eastern myths and legends like Japanese or Chinese, African um well, uh, Native American, Southern American, as I said, from all around the world. Once again, a beautiful, beautiful, 
re representation of this, uh, the historical character of Rasputin there, who is one, one of the main villains in um, this particular story. Um, and here I'm actually at the back of this particular collection. I might find... So yes, this is the... Right, see, this is the drawing I was talking about. That uh, first, well, drawing of Hellboy that Mike Mignola did. And from there, we of course got here to the final stage. Hellboy already having his huge right hand of doom, which is a basically a demonic um, uh, hand made of stone that is, spoilers, destined to bring up or bring about the end of the world. So, that is it, my friends. That is the art of Mike Mignola. He drew many more things, and not just Hellboy, but it is, you know, Hellboy is what he's mostly known for and mostly popular for, and that is why I chose to show you artwork from Hellboy, well, Volume 1, The Seed of Destruction, and, um, you know, so I don't take up much of your time. Um, and for these reasons, for really Mike Mignola using uh, a lot of things that I love myself, like myths and legends and history, and, um, the old cultures, and you know, the, the old Germanic people and the old Slavic people and so on and, and so forth. Uh, that's why I love him as far as the writer goes, or his writing aspect goes, because he write or wrote all the Hellboy stories. He drew most of them, um, uh, not all of them though, and as far as his artistic or visual side goes, I just adore his sense for detail. He doesn't use much detail, but the ones that, as I said, he decides to show you, these matter. And uh, Mike Mignola's art is so specific that you can recognize uh, Mignola's art just by a half look, right? You don't even have to look at it for a long time or, or it, it just, you know, you can just see it peripherally and know it's Mignola. So that's it. I really have nothing else to say but that Mignola is perfect. So what do you think, my friends? Have you read any of the Hellboy comic books or anything else written or drawn by Mike Mignola? What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, do not forget to dislike this video if you, if you don't like it, or like this video if you like it, and subscribe to this unimportant channel of an unimportant geek talking about unimportant things. Well, that would be all from me, my friends. See you soon, and bye.